Hi, this is my review of Wing Leader Victories 1940-42, game designers by Lee Bremacombe Woods, published by GMT Games, and this is the 2019 edition of the game. Next up, the rulebook. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the second edition, uh, rulebook V2.2. Um, the rulebook is very well written, very well edited. Um, it, this is a pretty detailed game, I'll be honest with you, and there's 40 odd pages of rules to the game. Um, but even with the amount of detail this game goes into, I found it very straightforward to read. I read through the rulebook a couple of times, got a game to the table and learnt the mechanics with the rulebook in front of me. And I found that a really good way of learning. There are also some excellent YouTube tutorials um, on available as well, which I highly recommend. Um, but I found overall the rulebook pretty straightforward, actually, for such a game that has the uh, amount of detail that this game has. Um, and I think it's because it just talks you through methodically all the mechanics of the game and does give you um, some examples of play which are great. Um, I didn't really find any of the rules ambiguous or anything like that. It's actually quite clear to me. I think I found, reading through the rule book, I had some a good understanding that all made sense when I started playing and then I learned the nuances of the games um, through actual play with the rule book in front. So yeah, it's a great job. Uh, beautifully laid out, um, very detailed, very it's very explicit in how the, the mechanics work and I had no problem with the rule book whatsoever. So next up is the scenario book and you get a huge amount of scenarios in the game, um, 30 in total. Some of them, and they, and they vary from um, the, the beginning scenarios that are just a couple of planes, uh, counters, so um, squadron for example against two flights, through to much larger, um, for example, much larger number of counters. And the um, scenario layout is very clear. It's very clear what counters you need to use, any special rules, or the specifics of the scenarios, and a great piece of historical con context as well, um, which I thought was brilliant. Um, I've played roughly, I think, two-thirds of the scenarios now. Um, and uh, they... The, the, the scenarios that use less counters obviously much quicker to play. And you, this is a game you can comfortably set up and play in an evening. Um, some of these scenarios with, with uh, less counters, you know, comfortably play in, in, a, in a, under an hour, I would say. Um, and it's just, just so much content. There's so many scenarios in the game. Um, and um, the, we'll, have, we'll have a look at the counters in a minute, but it's just a huge amount of content in this game, which is great. Um, and, uh, it's, you know, the, the scenarios is a variety of objectives. Some of them are bombing scenarios. Some of them have very specific things that uh, each side need to do. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge amount of content in the game. It's great stuff. This is uh, just a quick example of the counters well, the aircraft counters that you're using, um, if they have two pieces of art on them, so two planes on the artwork, it's a squadron. If they only have one, it's a flight. Flight is obviously smaller than the squadron. And um, the counter art is, is fantastic. It's very sort of um, slightly technical drawings, uh, beautifully done, um, absolutely gorgeous. And you get stacks and stacks of these in the game. So... Here we've got some examples, some zeros, some Japanese um, medium bombers, and the American Wildcat fighter. But you you get um, you know a variety of German bombers for sort of early war. Um, you know you get 109s, you get Spitfires for the Allies, Hurricanes, Allied bombers, um, Russian planes, um, Italian planes. It's just a phenomenal amount of content in the game. And what that means is that every time you play it, you can play with a different variety of, of playing types and in the scenarios as well. So, yeah, huge amount. And, again, these cards, um, you use these cards for the stats of the, of the uh, squadrons or flights. So they give you all the stats that you need. It's very clear, beautifully laid out, beautiful illustrations. Um, it's a real quality uh, level of quality that you'd expect from GMT games um, and this doesn't disappoint it's an absolutely gorgeous game um, in terms of its components I feel and very authentic and rich in its um, historical content which is which is great 
and I absolutely adore these little um, uh, squadron counters. They are, they are, yeah, it definitely is one of the highlights of the game for me. I mean, I, um, I grew up here in Lincolnshire and um, uh, here in the UK, and so we often see um, different World War Two planes flying over, and we live quite, not too far from Duxford the Imperial War Museum, which has a lot of historical planes. So I grew up uh, going to museums and seeing Spitfires fly over um, for different shows and things like that. So I have a great um, love of World War II aircraft. So, And this is, um, I feel this game is a great celebration of that. Um, the history and the detail of those planes is, is absolutely incredible. So yeah, beautifully done. So you also get a bunch of player aids. Um, they're very elegantly laid out, very clear. There are a few tables in the game. For the level of detail that the game has, there are a huge amount of tables um, compared to other war games that I play. Um, but there are a few, and thankfully, they're all on the player aids, which is great. That's the same one again, so you get a couple. Um, you also get a sequence of play um, and some of the key areas of, that relate to that, so around movement and movement costs and so forth. This is great because the sequence of play is super... Um, important to this game in, in the sense of you you really do need to take your time just to go through the different phases it doesn't take long to be honest with you to go through a complete sequence and it's it's actually again for this level of detail that this game has it's actually quite straightforward um, so yeah top job these are all great and you will use them a lot so in this example here I've just set the game up um, quickly um, this is not a specific scenario um, but just to illustrate some of the mechanics and just talk about the game in general. So we've got some German uh, bombers. Uh, we've got some light bombers and then some medium bombers here, supported by a whole bunch of 109 squadrons. Um, and they're going to be attacked by uh, some British uh, Hurricane and Spit squadrons as well. And then the cards representing the different um, squadrons, the different types of plane in this this particular example I should have mentioned actually on the back of the cards you do get a great piece of historical uh, context as well which is awesome and <clears throat> how the game works obviously this is a this is a game from from a side perspective where height and altitude is one of the key components of the game um, so these uh, counters represent a, in this case, represent a squadron, so a number of planes, not a, not a one plane or anything like that. Um, and um, as well as these counters here, you have some gameplay counters that you're going to be using. So, for example, one of the key components of the game is what's called the tally rule. Um, that's being able to follow and um, engage in combat. So you tally the enemy first. So, for example, this hurricane squadron would want to tally this uh, 109 squadron and um, you would roll uh, a couple of dice check any modifiers um, it's based on the range or the closer the easier and if they're tallied then they get a tally um, counter like that there aren't too many counters like that you use um, this example here the spitfires they're diving so they've got a, a dive counter and that's because the other counters that you use are on this wing display it's just slightly off camera here um, for example, uh, if we look at uh, Squadron uh, C, which is this 109 squad squadron here, so every counter has a letter. Um, this one here, this is C, and um, they are veterans, for example, whereas X, which is this um, German bomber squadron here, they have a bomb load and they um, are green, for example. Um, and you use these wing display to record a lot more of the detail um, so you don't need to clutter up the actual board like this. I've just laid this out here so it all fits nicely in the frame of the camera. You're actually, the way you play it, you wouldn't have any of these things on the board at all. Um, although some of the some of the scenarios you find, the sort of you're not using the whole map. Um, some of them you do a lot more, some of them a lot less, depending on the complexity and the number of counters of the scenario. Um, the actual mechanics themselves, very straightforward. So how you move, you're moving a number of squares, depending on what type of plane it is. You can gain altitude by going up, or you can um, dive by going down. You can do vertical dives and so forth. It's actually quite straightforward. Um, the thing to remember is the orientation of the counter in the square. 
so you go forwards you know in the direction that the counter is facing same pretty much with combat um, it's not a dice heavy game um, it's not a bucket of dice game you are if you engage in combat let's say these this hurricane and this uh, 109 squadron um, engage in combat you compare the depending on the type of combat that you want to do you compare values so a heads-on combat like this one for example you'd be comparing the speed value at the altitude which is on the cards the Spitfires have got a, a speed of five um, and the 109s have got a speed of five as well so there's no there's no advantage to each squadron in that particular case so the the odds modifier would be in the zero column on the combat sheet and then there are other um, dice modifiers etc so if they're veterans or if they're diving out of the you know diving out of the sun anything like that the reality is that when you play the game um, combat is actually quite streamlined for such a detailed game and it all makes a lot of sense um, it is a game as I said about where altitude um, is one of the key components so generally speaking not in every case but generally speaking if you're able to dive your your planes your squadrons into your targets you get an advantage because of the speed of the dive especially in relation to the sun so every scenario has a sun position if you can dive out of the sun and bounce your targets you're getting a good modifier for that plus the actual um you know, attributes of the of the squadron so if they're veterans um, and so forth that give you a massive advantage as well the, the truth is combat's actually quite effective um, and quite decisive this is not a long sustained type of combat game you you are um, diving on enemy squadrons and enemy bombers and they're trying to dive on you engage you it's quite hit and run for the most part um, and that's because when you've finished doing a combat round you'll roll to see if the if the if the squadrons become disrupted if they become so disrupted they actually return home so running out of am you know not running out of ammunition but spending ammunition will count towards that and again there are modifiers based on that the rea the truth of what i've when i've played all the different scenarios i've played is that you will have a number of squadrons returning home um, and therefore the actual gameplay sessions can be quite short um, and it is like i said super decisive it's not um you know, not rolling for you know one squadron buckets of dice every turn, just going on and on and on. It's just not like that at all. And for that reason, it's much more realistic and much more authentic. Um, there are many nuances to the mechanics, and way more detail than I've described. There are a great bunch of way better videos than I could ever do on YouTube about actually how all these mechanics actually work and the detail of those. And, on uh, for the game and i'd recommend you digging into those and looking at them i'm not going to go into all that um they other youtubers do a million times better job than i ever could um but what i enjoy about the game is it's uh i you know the i love all these counters i love the artwork um i grew up with a fondness of um world war ii planes from a combination of making model kits and going to um uh, you know, took to the Imperial War Museum and living here in Lincolnshire, you often see um, some of the war birds fly over. Um, so I have a great fondness for this period and World War II planes and war birds in, in particular. Um, and for that, it's, it's a great experience. And also, it's a very detailed and authentic experience. Um, and the best way to approach that detail is to take your time with it as you're learning the game. And appreciate the detail that goes in that went in, in that goes into the design of the game, and the level of or or you know authentic historical content. The actual mechanics, as I've said, are actually quite streamlined. I find for again that's with so much detail, it all makes sense. Um, it's if you just take your time and learn through the mechanics, it's uh, actually flows pretty quick. And the, the as I said, the scenarios don't take long to play at all. So in conclusion, brilliant components. Uh, beautifully done uh, I love all the artwork I, everything's very clear um, all the mechanics are a great combination of historical detail which I love and completely appreciate combined with a, a real playability um, you know uh, I've been playing this game a lot um, during lockdown um, in, in during the COVID period and it solitaires really well it's not a solitaire game um, but it solitaires incredibly well, playing both sides. Um, 
and uh, doesn't take long to play through a mission, you know, through, through a scenario. You can do that in an evening, set it up, and it doesn't take long at all. And it has that, that rich historical detail that I really, really appreciate. Um, so overall, yeah, big thumbs up for me. It's probably, of all the uh, World War II aircraft-based games, this is easily one of my favourites. He's actually... To be honest with you, one of my favourite war games. I think for that I for for an evening's play, um, it's very rare that you I have many games in my collection that are as detailed and as authentic as this that you can play in an evening. I've got lots that you can that take twelve hours or fourteen hours to play. Um, not about you know bombers and planes, um, but this is a game that very much you can play in an evening, and and that's great combined with the components with the clarity of the rules the actual mechanics themselves they all make they all just make a lot of sense there's very there's very rare i've read anything in the game i went what how does that work it all just makes perfect sense and um it's a joy a joy to play with brilliant uh, production values i would say so yeah big thumbs up for me uh, easily one of my favorite detailed war games that you can play in an evening easily one of my favorite war games covering this type of subject matter and as I said, um, I have a great fondness for things like Spitfires and Hurricanes and Messerschmitts and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, a lot of fun. Um, so I highly recommend it. Um, if, if you're looking for a World War II war game about squadron combat um, uh, between the different forces and that you have an appreciation of uh, the level of detail this game goes into, yeah, highly recommend it. So great stuff as always. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.